Hey everybody, it's Al with Bobcat. So I wanted to pick up on some of the new features in the version 27. Uh, they do, on uh, this example, we're going to talk about some of the new CAD features and some of the new CAM features. To start with, we're going to create one of my new favorite uh, surfacing tools, a swept surface. So we will go to surface and then sweep. We will choose our attachment point. So I'll do a shift left click to grab the snap points. I will grab this point right here. Shift, uh, select for our profile and then uh, shift left click for our other side. Right click cancel. Okay, so now we have our model. Uh, which you could have done this in uh, the previous versions of Bobcad. What you couldn't have done in the previous versions until now is build surfaces based off of surface edges. Uh, this is a huge improvement and let's take a look at how it works. Uh, instead of converting wireframe, I'm going to choose a planar surface and I will pick the surface edges of this model right here and spacebar and S so I can see my skins and spacebar again so we just capped off that surface there we are going to, we are going to do the same thing on the other side so I'm clicking through picking these surface edges spacebar S to show our uh, surfaces spacebar again okay great now we've gone ahead and created our model. So let's generate our new job, run our stock wizard. I'm going to go ahead and add some stock on the bottom, pick my origin. Okay, so now I have my part set up. I'm going to load in a strategy I've already set up, so I'm going to load feature. This is going to be an advanced rough and an advanced Z-level finish, which is a new 3D strategy in the version 27. I'll go ahead and select my model here. I will edit some of my parameters. I just want to talk about some of the new features. One of them is going to be this intermediate slices where you can go after uh, each depth or after the last step. So this will allow you to step up as you're stepping down. Uh, a little more improved functionality there, uh, better workflow, uh, better cutter motion, uh, but you can use the old way as well. I do want to check my depth options here. I want it to be min-max from stock, so that way the extra stock that I have on the bottom, uh, the tool toolpath won't cut into that, so I can have something to grab on to uh, Z level finish I do let me grab a holder here real quick I do want to look at some of these options we do have an adaptive depth of cut it um, will pick up uh, some of the shallow shallow uh, uh, as the surfaces start to flatten out it will uh, generate additional cuts to cut in those areas if I turn it on you can see in red that's what it's going to do there so it'll give us a nice clean finish but I did want to talk about the pattern in this example it's going to use a zigzag so as we're following that contoured surface it's going to uh, go back and forth versus cutting in a single direction and wrapping back so let's go ahead and compute this uh, generating our tool path and then uh, we'll pick it up in the simulation take a look at what's going on should be done here in just a moment uh, not much has changed about the simulation again you do have your uh, 3d mouse support which is kind of nice if you don't have a 3d mouse I do recommend picking up one uh, if you're not sure where to get a 3d mouse we have I think three or four different models that you can choose from from our website so you can just Go to bobcat.com and under the store and hardware section, uh, the 3D mice are listed there with your different options. So let's go ahead and play through our simulation. Again, this is going to show the step up after each step of the cut. That was those uh, step ups right there. Pretty, uh, pretty standard. Again, just some added uh, functionality as far as. Uh, processing and whether it waited to get all the way down to the bottom or whether it cleans it up as it goes. 
Let's go ahead and um, just fin finishing up the last sections here. Oh, it looks like my tool uh, length is a little bit off, so we see some gouging. But this is the part that I really wanted to look at here. We can go back and adjust our tool length. I'll have to see where we went wrong there. But this is the part that is really kind of neat. We have the Z level finish uh, working its way back and forth to clean up this surface here. You can see it's doing a really good job. The uh, adaptive step down, uh, you know, as these comes over this radius, uh, there are additional cuts that are made. And as it follows the other radius on the other side, those uh, additional cuts will come in there and uh, clean up that radius and give you a better finish. You'll also see that, uh, well, let's see, we, we kind of wanted to roll over a little bit further, so we'll look at how to address that. But before we do that, we need to change some tooling information or cutting parameters with our roughing tool, and I want to make some adjustments with our finishing tool. But again, before we do that, I want to go back and I want to change my model. So I'm going to blank out my tool paths here. Let me blank out my stock too. All right. Let's go into our history tree. So we have our history tree. We generated this sweep here. So I'm going to bring up my CAD layer. And um, OK, I want to go to my path here. And instead of having radiuses here, I'm just going to delete those. This is a quick example. So instead of having radiuses there, I want to throw a chamfer in instead. So we're going to do chamfer. That's fine. One from here to here and one from here to there. OK, so now we've changed our design. I'm going to remove this first profile, reselect, select this again, spacebar. And at this time, you'll see that our model is now updated. OK, so now that we've updated our model, in the cam tree, we want to remove and reselect so we can select our new design. And then we want to come in and make some changes. So let me see. I have this min max from stock. My flute length, and my hangout. Let me just bump this up a little bit, and that should be good. And then on my Z level finish, I do want to go to my options and you have part bottom extends, 3D extends, That's, that looks good. Let's go ahead and finish. And let's recompute both of those. And then we'll unblank our toolpath and see uh, how, uh, it's, uh, how the toolpath has been updated for both the design change. And hopefully I have enough hang out on my tool uh, so I'm not clipping the top of the part. So we have our advanced rough. You can see that it's being applied to the chamfer. Uh, we also have, let me see, let me see, let's go to section view. I guess this side view here. It's not really what it, uh, here we go. This kind of helps to see uh, where the tool path is being generated along the model. Kind of useful. All right, let's cancel that out. Updated our toolpath. Let's go ahead and run the simulation. See what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead to the Z level finish routine. I'll just fast forward it basically. All right, so now we're not clipping the top of the part, which is good. And then we can uh, run our Z level finish here kind of speed this up a little bit so you can see that it's now attacking that chamfer uh, versus the radius that was there in the past uh, and again back and forth staying in the cut uh, I think doing a really good job so uh, these are just some of the new features found uh, in the version 27 for both design and machining. If you have any questions, feedback, comments, please reply back to the Facebook, the YouTube, or whatever thread this video may be posted in. Uh, otherwise, we'll catch you in the next video. Thank you so much, guys.